Hello and welcome back to another Star Citizen video. Today we're gonna look at Anvil Aerospace, one of the two biggest military manufacturer for Star Citizen. And guess what? One of the best ship that I like and I'm biased. It's in the game and that's right. You saw it. It's right on the screen. It is the Karak or rather, no. I'll take that back. It is the Anvil Arrow. <laughs> Before we begin, like, subscribe, hit the notification button and help this channel grow. And let's check out Anvil Arrow Space. And it has actually quite a ship lineup that I can easily recommend for you to grab in-game. Right. And of course, the Karak. I'm, I'm a fanboy. I will admit. <laughs> so let's start off with the ship. We're going to start off with Anvil Arrow for $75. Okay, do note, big, big PSA. You do not need to buy any of this ship with real money. All this ship is purchasable in-game. You just need to play the game. And all you need is a starter pack. What's better than a starter pack? A discounted starter pack. What's better than a discounted starter pack? You get to play the game for free first for the IAE 2953 event. And then... If you like it, then you dis uh, I mean, then you can decide to grab a starter pack. And that's the most biggest PSA that I will put out. Now, let's get onto the ship. Anvil Aerospace. And we're going to start off with the Aero $75. This is the best light fight. No, I'm saying the best. The cheapest light fighter that you can afford. And it's actually not bad. It is slightly... A, yeah, okay, I'm going to talk about DPS. The DPS is slightly lower than the Gladius. Just slightly. It's not really that low because it has size 2, size 2, size 2. So it's actually the same. If you're asking me, it is the same DPS output per se. But Arrow is a little bit more paper thin in armor, but it makes up with very, very good maneuverability. That's the strongest suit about Arrow. Next up, we have a ground vehicle. We have the Ballista, $140. Ground vehicle, more than $100. Easy skip. Personally, easy, easy skip. Next up, we have the C8R Pisces at $65. This is a support medical ship. Okay, so Pisces in general is a support ship for the Anvil Karak. In this case, usually I'll say skip, but the Pisces is actually not bad. Not the rescue version. The rescue version is great. Oh no, you know what? I just realized. I just realized something. The Pisces is a good replacement for the Cutlass Red. Yes. No, it is the best replacement for the Cutlass Red. Chances are you're gonna the Pisces has quantum jump. So on one end you can do uh, not say can do, you can jump alongside with big fleets and it's nimble enough it's small enough to go down to planet side yeah sure if you're going against that with dedicated um combat ship you will lose but what i'm saying is at 65 dollars okay let's let's take off the 65 dollars this ship can dock to big ships whereas the Cutlass rate you can't. So this is actually a good supplement for big fleets and big ships that doesn't have medical facility. That's right. That's right. So this is actually a very, very good replacement. Plus it's cheaper. Okay. All right. That's the reason why I felt Cutlass rate was like, there is one or two things Cutlass rate was okay in the beginning, but it has, yeah. It's because it has a better alternative. Next up, we have the Pisces Expedition, $45. This is the Pew Pew version. Simple as that. Next up, we have the Karak. All right. At $600, it has a special upgrade offer, which is great, which is good. The only reason why I'm biased on Karak. Number one, it has a medical bay. Number two, it can carry a Pisces. And similar ship of its size. So anything smaller or same size as Pisces, no issue. And at the same time, it is technically, personally, the Karak is the Millennium Falcon for Star Citizen. I dare say the Karak 
is the Millennium Falcon for Star Citizen. Some people say, oh, you know what, it's supposed to be MSR or whatnot. It's like, no, no, the Carrack, hear me out, because it has side turret, the Millennium Falcon has top and bottom, which is MSR is close, but I think this is closer. Yeah, the only difference is the shape. Yes, it's not round. It's a bit more elongated. The turrets are at the side. Yeah, yeah, no matter how I see it, the Carrack is better. Yep. I will stand at that decision at the moment. I know there are better ships coming up through the pipeline for Star Citizen, but the one that is flight ready, that is tried and true, yeah, the Carrack. The Carrack does it all. And to top it off, it is a expedition exploration ship. On paper, it's the best exploration ship out there. Okay. Enough about fanboying about the character. <laughs> Next up, we have the Centurion, $110 ground vehicles. Easy, easy skip, easy skip. $110, crazy. Next up, we have the Crucible at $350. This is a repair ship. Now, it is in concept. We do not know how this ship will operate in the future. But keep in mind, currently, the speculation is you can carry a ship in the repair bay unofficially. And if that's the case, I think it's cool. I think it's a cool, cool ship to have. Plus it's 350, uh, 350. flight ready is gonna be expensive. That's one thing, one, one way you can put it. But of course things can change down the line. So you want to taper your expectation for the Crucible a little bit before it goes live, right? Or because, before it goes flight ready. Next up, we have the Hornet series and for $110, instead of buying a vehicle, the Hornet is a better pick. Now we're going to start off with the F7C Hornet, this is the base version. The F7C Hornet Wildfire, this is basically Hornet with better armaments. And of course, my personal favorite, the F7C M Super Hornet. Now the Super Hornet uh, went up in price, so it's $185 now, Ooh, painful. It is a two pilot ship, or rather, it is technically one, pi uh, one pilot, but it has two seats. All the weapons is controllable by the pilot. So that is the key thing. If you want a good, good fighter that has long last, I want to say long lasting power, like it, it is good. 185 for medium fighter, this is actually a good choice. In fact, I would rank the Super Hornet in the top five category. I will I will wrap it up with what is the best fighter that I think I can I will get if I were to choose. And I know one of them it's already in my list, right? Of fleet. Or my fleet list. Uh, messed up that a bit. <laughs> Next up we have the F7 C R Hornet Tracker. This is the basically this is the scanning version of the Super Hornet. $140. Next, we have the Hornet Ghost. This is the stealth version. And that's it. Yeah. Currently, I do not know if you can mount a... Because I know the middle um, the middle turret, not the turret. The, the middle section of the Hornet is swappable. So the base is a cargo. Tracker has better scanning suite. Now the Ghost... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about the Ghost. And the Super Hornet and the Hornet Wildfire has a ball turret, which can mount a size 5 weapon. That's awesome. Size 5. Crazy. That's, that's the reason why Super Hornet is awesome. Okay, next up, the F8C Lightning. So what's better than the Hornet? The F7C Lightning. The soaked up version. At $300, this is the best of the best fighter in the verse according to stats and actually it is crazily good unfortunately it's luck uh, from the previous event if you if you have been looking at star citizen there is a golden ticket hunt event and it's mainly to buy the f8c lightning unfortunately i did not play so i, I couldn't buy which is a little bit painful yeah because if let's say I could buy the F8C Lightning, it's my number one pick for the best fighter in the verse. 
yes, unfortunately, a little bit biased, but it is it is number one. No matter how you see it, it is sleek, it is nice, it has maximum DPS, it has everything. Truth to be told, it has everything on paper and flight ready. So it's 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 there. Problem? $300. Next up, we have the Gladiator. Now, the Gladiator is an odd little ship in the Anvil lineup. It is a bomber, but it's not really a bomber. It is a fighter, but it's not really a fighter or not enough DPS to be a dedicated fighter. So it's... I don't know. <laughs> It's nice to have variety, but I don't know. <laughs> That's how I put it. Next up, we have the Hawk at $100. This is a bounty hunting ship and it has an EMP. So if you, um, if you don't like the Avenger Warlock and if you want something a little bit more, just a little bit more, the Hawk is actually not bad. But unfortunately, its DPS is spread out yeah, one thing bad about having many, many mounting points like the F8C Lightning. F8C Lightning has a lot, a lot of mounting points. Unfortunately, the guns are not that big, right? It has quantity, but not big. Whereas the Hornet and the Super Hornet, you can mount a big weapon if you, want, if you choose to, and it has some small little weapons to complement it. And the problem with Hawk is the same thing. It has quantity, but not quality. If you want to compare to the Avenger, uh, the Avenger Warlock or the Avenger series in general, because the Avenger series has size four weapon hard point. The Hawk, I believe everything is size one or size two, right? Yeah, that, that is the fine line between, do you want more alpha damage? or you want do you want a burst shot or you want more sustain the anvil series or rather the anvil lineup is more sustained type of damage rather than burst the ages apparently lo love burst yeah and of course the best burst is the aries okay now we're gonna move on to the hurricane at 210 dollars this used to be i'm not sure she's still the king a two pilot weapon platform it, it is a heavy fighter maximum firepower for the gunner which is great right the pilot has devastating weapon as well unfortunately this ship requires two pipe uh, yeah you know what two pilots to perform its maximum dps if, if it's only the pilot then your dps is only 50 percent which is painful very very painful Next up, we have the Legionnaire at $120. This is a combat boarding ship. Now, this one is a bit unique. Compared to other drop ships, these ships can straight away dock to any ship, according to paper, right? It's a direct dock. Now, unfortunately, it's in concept. We have not seen any activity yet. I'm going to guess the Legionnaire is mainly a storytelling ship for Squadron 42, mainly. For normal... PV and uh, not say for normal mass MMO PvP type, I don't think the Legionnaire will be used often. I have a feeling, yeah, for real people PvP is in general. So I blow up your ship first. Or who blows up who first? That's it. PvE, yeah. This is more of a PvE ship. PvE combat ship. Or rather PvE boarding ship. Okay. Next up, we have the Liberator at $575. This is a light carrier. All right. Can I say a light carrier? Actually, it's more of a hovercraft or a hover carrier. Okay, it's a carrier. Fine, fine. Because it really shapes like a, like a hovercraft. Um, ground vehicles at the back. And then there's two platforms, one on top and one in the front for ships. Yep. And it's not... It's, um, how to put it this way, it's kind of open air. The weird part is kind of open air. So, I don't know. Yeah, but $575, yeah. It, it is an easy scheme in general. Next up, we have the Spartan. This is a ground transport. Again, ground vehicles, easy scheme in my opinion. Next up, we have the Terrapin at $220. This is the 
best solo pathfinding or solo exploration ship. It has a strong exploration module, or in this case, scanner. Now, we do not know how the scanning gameplay is in Star Citizen at the moment, other than just basic scanning. Will we get better scanning range? And I'll say not better scanning range, better scanning gameplay. Like, how would you improve? Not how would you improve? How would you make an exploration fun in terms of scanning? That is a good question because I want to know too. <laughs> Next up, we have the Valkyrie now. I did say a lot, right? If you want the best of the best dropship, the Valkyrie is the way to go. $375, yes, it's expensive. But the best part about the Valkyrie, this is really, really a good dropship slash kind of pseudo gunship. It can carry a cyclone. It has armaments for all the party inside here. And if you want to buy a cut, uh, Cutlass Steel, I would say skip Cutlass Steel, get the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is tried and true, the best versatile dropship in the game at the moment. I have not, I won't not say I have not, and I say I won't, right? Maybe there will be another better dropships down the line, but right now the Valkyrie takes all 10 points for dropship capability. It's nice, it's cool, it's great. It has enough DPS to do a lot of pew pew. And it can carry vehicles up to a cyclone, not tanks. If this guy can carry tank, it's broken. <laughs> yeah, and its shape is actually quite, quite close to a pelican. If you played Halo, you probably know what, it, what I'm talking about. Yeah, it is cool. And that's it. That's all I have for you for Anvil Aerospace. Now, before I go, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button and help this channel grow. Until then, I will see you guys in the verse and fly safe. Yep. Do we have special offer? Nah, yeah, special offer is normal. And of course, uh, brand pack. Sexy ship, okay. Mm -mm -mm. I know I have a better alternative to this, but in tried and true, the character has everything. Everything and anything you need and you want. Except pew pew. Okay, fine. See ya, my friends.